Hey guys, Paulina Shafir here with Lucid Sight Dev Diaries. Here's our latest episode with Jason Wishnov. Hey, thanks for having me back. Of course. As you guys know, this is the man, the vision behind our game Cryptic Conjure, which just had a pre-sale and is still going on, just launched. So we just want to get into some specifics about the pre-sale and also let you guys know about something that's coming out in the next couple of days. Yep. Steal the show. I will steal it. Um, so again, anyone who is already purchasing the pre-sale, thank you so much. We're super excited by the response we've gotten so far. Uh, we're going to have new items coming up actually every day coming this week. So you're going to want to check back literally every 24 hours at noon Pacific to check out the newest stuff that's being offered. But the big news we're dropping today is that the demo, the Cryptic Conjure demo, is coming uh, on Thursday at noon. By the time you're watching this, it might already be up. I have no idea. Regardless, this demo is a big deal for us. We've been working on this for over half a year. And you know this is this is an Unreal 4 game. It's built in Ethereum blockchain. It's one of the first games on Ethereum to use this really high fidelity engine. You know, same one as Fortnite, same one as a lot of the major releases coming out, Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, so this is our first chance to get it out to you, the users. Now, uh, this game is uh, this demo is, is single player, and it's not necessarily going to reflect the stuff you've already purchased so far. But it is going to give you a great idea of how the game plays, how it looks, how it sounds, and how everything works. Because you can read blog post after blog post, but in the end, it's hard to really get a sense of how things are working until you get in and start playing. So I uh, we're going to put it up. If you guys have feedback for us, if you find any bugs, hopefully not, but whatever. Um, Go ahead uh, and let us know in our Discord or Telegram or Twitter or however you want to reach us. And importantly, if you have already purchased an item in the Cryptic Conjure presale, uh, you're going to be able, by playing the demo, to earn uh, an orange Krista and, if you beat the hard mode, good luck, a yellow Krista. So you'll be able to actually earn some in-game assets just by trying out the demo. Wow. Uh, and showing your friends. That's much different than most demos out there. Definitely is, Paulina. Uh, but we think it's a really cool way to kind of reward our... Uh, reward our players who have been involved so far and who have jumped in at the earliest time. Uh, after this, if you're not necessarily, you know, maybe you don't have a really strong computer, or maybe you don't have the time, uh, we're actually uh, right now going to go through uh, the demo. Uh, I'm going to be narrating over it, kind of explaining the various gameplay systems and how they work. So that's coming up in just a second. Uh, and yeah, really excited to share it with everyone. Yeah, guys, this is super exciting. Cryptic Conjure is doing great in the pre-sales right now, and we're super excited to show you guys this demo. So that's it, guys. Stay tuned for more Dev Diaries to come out pretty soon. We have new updates coming out with Crypto Space Commander, MLB Crypto Baseball, and other fun stuff that we're working on. Are we ready to let's play? Let's play. Let's, let's play. See you guys soon. Cool. Bye. Hey guys, this is Jason Wishnov, lead developer on Cryptic Conjure, and I'm here for a developer commentary for a run-through for our demo, which just came out. Hopefully you have a chance to check it out yourself, but if you don't, we're going to go through it right here. So at the bottom of the screen, we kind of see a PC-looking hotbar, and we do have full support, of course, for keyboard and mouse, but we're actually going to play this one with a controller, and the UI will dynamically switch depending on what you're using. So there's not too much to do in this first room, but we're going to take a look uh, kind of graphically what we're doing here. Um, we experimented with a lot of styles we sort of settled on this semi cell shaded look if you uh, see if we zoom in we kind of have this like distorted sketch outline shader that we're using we can see it on both the character and the environment from a distance really helps it give a unique look to the visuals of the game along with some of Unreal's more advanced rendering features we see some wet ripples right there but moving on we want to get to that gameplay we want to see how that stuff works so as we approach this creepy stone guardian thing, uh, we're going to talk about spells. So obviously there are a variety of types. We have projectile, we have area of effect, we have cone, and a variety of others. But uh, for this one, we're just going to go ahead and cast a simple fireball. And the way that works with a controller is that we can hold either the right trigger or the left trigger. And then when we're holding that trigger, use one of the corresponding face buttons on the controller. So here I'm going to hold the left trigger and press the left face button for the fireball spell. And that puts us in aiming mode here. Uh, and then all we have to do is pull the trigger again to fire, and there we go. This guy was pretty weak, and these are actually experience points. Uh, it's always more fun to pick something up physically rather than just see a bar fill. Uh, and we see him fade away, and we're going to move on forward. Into the next room. We're just gunning through it here. All right, so in this room, we're going to start getting into slightly more advanced battle mechanics. So here we have everyone's favorite mechanic, the teleport dash, or as we're calling it, the spark step. We spent a ton of time tuning this to make it feel great for the player. 
Uh, and of course, this is used for environment traversal as such, or for, more obviously, dodging attacks in battle, and we'll get to that shortly. We can see as we teleport around that it's using stamina, or SP, which is up in the upper left corner, quickly regenerating. Each spark step costs 10 SP. There's also another defensive uh, mechanic that uses SP, and that is the shield. We hold the B button and a shield goes up. That's for when you don't think you can evade an attack, and not all attacks can be evaded, but you still want to mitigate some of the damage. So let's move on forward and go to the next room. Now in this room, uh, we're going to talk about spell chains, which is probably one of the more uh, most advanced mechanics in the game. Now this is really meant to kind of tie in uh, from a multiplayer perspective and really bring home some teamwork, but this is a single player demo, so we're just going to show it off by ourselves with a fake person, an NPC, coming up to us to give us a new spell. She's going to greet us with an emote here and kind of say some some cool things. Uh, she's going to go ahead and give us one of her essence, uh, one of her spells that she crafted. She's giving us an essence via the blockchain, and then we uh, can use the same spell that she worked hard to craft. In the real game, that would decrease the power of the spell for everyone involved, but because this is just a demo, we can see there, Searing Blast. We're just going to go ahead and get it for free. It says spell power reduced to 190%, which is what it would say in the real game. And now we have a fire spell, a wind spell, and a light spell. Now, spell chains, uh, basically every element in uh, every area in the game has an elemental sequence, so we have fire, then wind, then light. And if we cast spells against an enemy in that order, we keep hitting them in that order, uh, we get, we're going to get a multiplier to go higher and higher, and our spells are going to do more and more damage. So let's see how that works. We're going to cast Vortex, which is a wind spell. We see our AoE marker there. And we see this kind of circle appear next to the Cave Scorpion's name. That indicates the spell wheel and the amount of time left to hit the next element on that wheel. So we see it's pointing to green right now, which is wind. The next one up is white. That's a light spell. Well, we just got one of those. Let's go ahead and cast that. And as long as it's within the timer, we're going to get a chain X2. It's going to do more damage. And the chain uh, it gets harder and harder to get higher and higher because the timer uh, quickly becomes very short. So it's tough to do by yourself, but if you have a really, really coordinated team that knows the sequence and they're casting spells rapid fire back to back, you can really get that chain value very, very high. So in this room we have kind of our first real fight of the demo, and it's introducing the final mechanic that we need, which is a melee attack, which is the X button, which is also tied to stamina. So that's three things tied to stamina. We have our dash, we have our shield, and we have our melee. And it's really important to decide where you're going to use your SP for offense or defense. That's a really, really important part of battle. Since this is a real fight, let's go ahead and cast a shield spell, increase some defense, and let's go ahead and open things off with this AoE because these two guys were foolish enough to stand right next to each other. Now with a lot of these spells, while we're aiming, we can move around as such, as the scorpion comes to try and kill us. We did not do a spell chain right there, but that's okay. He's weak. We managed to kill him, no problem. This guy's going to fire lasers at us. I mean, eventually. But he's not too much of a pain to deal with by himself. It can make larger battles much more chaotic, though, which we'll see very shortly. And as we get these last experience points, ooh, a level up. All of our stats go back to maximum. And you know what? Because we're at maximum stats, I say let's let's just jump in. Let's jump in and take these guys out. Oop, let's get out of the way there. So not every spell, ca oop, teleport dash, has those kind of markers, but when they do, we can avoid them, which is pretty cool. And with a spell chain, we made quick work of those ugly scorpion things. Let's move on to this cool door, which leads to the boss room. The boss room here, one of my favorite rooms, uh, made by our environment artist, Noe Leva. does a fantastic job. Let's get that shield spell back up. And let's just wander in, you know, to this nice, nothing bad's going to happen to, oh my god! <laughs> Alright, so we have these two guys on the edges. They're going to fire lasers at us. You could kill them first, but ah, you know what? I like the chaos of battle. Oh boy. So we're just going to get rid of those. We're going to try and get a spell chain uh, up to four if we can real quick. Let's shield that. Get the third element there. Chain X3. Let's try and finish it off with a fireball there. Chain X4. He's already more than half dead. So we can see our MP, oh boy, is kind of low right now, and normally your teammates could help out, but these mana circles in this battle, mana circles, are going to regenerate it very quickly. We can see that going up very, very fast. Let's continue to pummel away at this guy, peppering in some melee strikes. Oh boy, let's get out of the way. You can see dodging around is key to battle, not getting hit by these attacks, and this guy goes down. 
No trouble there. We're going to get another level up. And that's it. That's the demo. There's also a hard mode, if this was too easy, and it might have been. Uh, you can actually go through a much more challenging version of this dungeon and get a yellow Krista as a reward, assuming you've bought something in our pre-sale, which you should definitely go check out at crypticconjure.com slash sale. Anyway, it was a pleasure. I hope you guys had fun, continue to have fun, and we're really looking forward to continuing to update you with development as we move along. For Crypticonjure, thanks for being here, guys. Catch you on the flip side.